Morning Church, welcome to uh, our church online. This is really quite exciting to be able to, to speak to you through the camera. This is, uh, this is fun. Um, uh, we're going to dive into the Word. We're going to be carrying on this series that, that Nick started called Cross Talk, looking at the words of Jesus as he approaches the cross. And of course, today is uh, quite a special day in the, in the Christian calendar. Today is Palm Sunday, which means next week is Easter. How crazy is that? That's quite exciting. Who knew that we were going to be spending Easter indoors, but that's okay because God is present and God is everywhere. God is where I am and God is where you are. That is good news in and of itself. Uh, let's pray and then we're going to dive straight in to the book of Luke. Lord Jesus, thank you so much that we still get to come around your word, that we still get to learn something fresh, that we still get to be inspired by your word despite everything that's going on, Lord. We know that you are the Prince of Peace. We know that you are the King of Kings, the Lord of the Lords. And Lord, we just submit to your authority. We trust you, Jesus. In your glorious name we pray. Amen. Well, the title of my sermon today is called Planning for Peace. And of course, if you want that VIP ticket to heaven, we take notes, right? I'm joking, of course not. Um, but do feel free because afterwards, use this as, a, as something to talk to in your small groups. Uh, online, because uh, that's what we're really encouraging everyone to do. But I'm going to jump in uh, to, to Luke chapter 9, and obviously Luke chapter 9 uh, follows Luke chapters 1 through 8. So Jesus has been around for some time. He's been doing some miracles, he's been doing uh, ministry, he's been gathering his disciples, he's been doing some pretty cool stuff. But there's this verse that crops up in the, in the middle of, of Luke, uh, in, in Luke chapter 9, and it's Luke 9, 51, and it says, When the days drew near for him to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem. I don't know, there's something quite profound about this moment. You can imagine the gravitas in this. He's just been doing all these things, and then suddenly he stops. Something happens, and he just sets his face towards Jerusalem. Because that's where he's going. He hasn't once forgotten what he's been sent to earth to do, why he's here, his purpose, his plan. And he even says later in Luke chapter 13, uh, he says, Jerusalem, he's still not there yet, he says, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those who sent you, how often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings and you are not willing Look, your house is left to you desolate. I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Wow. So Jesus is looking at Jerusalem. And Jerusalem is representative of, of kind of the, 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 the corruption of the world. This is the, 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 the place and the people that God has chosen to be God of. He's like, I will be your God, you will be my people. And they have really gone about of the last few centuries the wrong way. They've turned from him, they've worshipped different gods. It's been a little bit of a mess. And Jerusalem here is representative of, of humanity because God's people is all people. But he's chosen Jerusalem to, to, to display it. And he knows, he looks at them and he says, you who kill the prophets and stone those who sent you, how often I have longed to gather your children together. See, the one thing that we can know about Jesus out of everything is that Jesus has a plan. Yeah, Jesus has a plan and not once when he was on earth did he forget it. He knew he was going to Jerusalem and he knew what he was going to have to do, what price he was going to have to pay because how much he wanted to gather the people together, to gather his children together and bring them back to him after the fall that we saw in Genesis 3. And of course, there's that little section as well. He says, you will not see me again until you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. He's saying, I'm not going to come to you. I'm not going to come until you have a little trust and recognize what I'm about to do or recognize at least who I am. There's a great, um, I was watching a little bit uh, online of um, some clips of sermons and Billy Graham had this great um, 
great little snippet, and he was talking about if God told you what he was going to do, if God told you his plan, if God told you um, you what he was doing in the nation right now, you wouldn't believe it. So why bother telling you? (laughs) Because you wouldn't believe it anyway. And you know what? It's kind of crazy because I think a lot of the time we sit there and go, no, 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 God, I, I, I want to know. I want, I want to know the plan. I'd like to know exactly the plan that you have for my life. But the thing is, we, we, we don't believe it. And it's backed up by scripture. You see, he set his face towards Jerusalem, sure. But he takes quite a while to get there. In fact, he doesn't get there for another 10 chapters. And a chapter is, you know, a long time in, in the Bible, I don't know. But it's still, it's still 10 chapters and he's still got some time to go. So he goes to cha- Luke chapter 18 and he's sitting with his disciples and he's, he's predicted his, his death and resurrection three times, but this is the third and final time he does it with them. And he sits down with the disciples and he says, we are going up to Jerusalem and everything that is written by the prophets about the Son of Man, about myself, about Jesus, will be fulfilled. He will be delivered over to the Gentiles. They will mock him, insult him, and spit on him. They will flog him and kill him. On the third day, he will rise again. See, this is Jesus. This is God sitting down with some people like you and me and going, this is the plan. This is what I'm going to do. And I love what it says next because it says, the disciples did not understand any of this. He's sitting there and, st- I mean, us coming from, you know, after, after the fact of the, of the resurrection, we, we kind of look at that and go, yeah, it's pretty easy to understand. He's going to die and rise again. But the disciples are getting it said to them really quite plainly, and they don't understand any of it. His meaning is hidden from them, and they, I just love this turn of phrase, and they just did not know what he was talking about. I, I, I can imagine some of them, you know, Simon and maybe Andrew going, what is he, he's, this is the third time he said it. I mean, it, three times. I, did you get it the first time? I didn't, I didn't. They don't get it. And, and Jesus knows. Because this is what he's asked for his disciples. When he says, follow me. When he says, come, I'll make you fishers of men. Listen, a lot of what Jesus is speaking about is so grand that, as Billy Graham says, We don't get it. We just wouldn't believe it. And here's the second thing that we need to know about our Jesus. Jesus asks us to trust him, not understand him. God is, his ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. We're not going to understand everything that he does. But he asks us to trust in what he does. Is that, there's that great passage that, that says, you know, all things work together for the good of those who love him. And it's a great passage and we use it often. But can we be honest, does anyone else find that difficult? When we're going through hard times, when we lose loved ones or when, we, when we're going through a rough patch in our jobs or even, even what's going on now. It's hard to kind of fathom how all of this can work together for the good of us that love him. And yet that's a promise. And Jesus is saying, I I don't need you to understand it, because quite frankly, you can't. All I'm asking you is to trust it. All I'm asking you is to trust me. Now the next chapter is, is what today represents, Palm Sunday. And Jesus is got on the donkey and he's and he's heading in towards Jerusalem. He's heading in. We see this in Luke 19, chapter 37. And he's fulfilling a lot of prophecies right now as he's riding in on this donkey. And they say, when he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. I love this. I mean, Jesus said earlier, right, remember in in Luke uh, 13, he says, I'm not going to come until you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And they take it a step further. They say, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Now, you see, this is being sung by the crowd of disciples. And what we learned earlier is the disciples don't understand. They don't get it. However, we can see here that they've chosen to trust him. 
they've decided to go and sing for all the miracles they had already seen, for all the things that they had already seen God do, for every miracle, every testimony, every preaching, every witness, every, every little single thing that Jesus had done there going, look, I may not know what's coming, I may not fully get the big picture, but I trust you and I'm going to sing your praises for he who comes in the name of the Lord. That is the faith that these disciples are displaying. They also are fulfilling some prophecies. And of course, the Pharisees uh, are around, they're not happy about this. They're, they're seeing what, what, what was happening. And they say, uh, some of the Pharisees in the crowd, they say to Jesus, teacher, rebuke your disciples, stop them singing. Can you not see what's going on? You can't, you can't allow them to do this. But Jesus, he knows who he is. Jesus knows that he is the, the God of gods, the King of kings and the Lord of the lords. And he says, I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. Some translations say the very stones or the stones themselves. Jesus has to be praised. That is just foundational. No matter what, if we're not going to praise him, he will find praise from somewhere. And all creation will sing of his glory. And then this next bit really is so beautiful and touching. It says, as he approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it. I'm just going to pause here. There's that famous verse that I think might even be more memorable than John 3.16, because it's only two words. And it's as Jesus is approaching the tomb of his dear friend Lazarus. And the women come up and they say, Jesus, you're too late. He's already dead. And this famous verse, it just says, Jesus wept. Jesus weeps over his friend that is dead, but that needs to be raised up. Jesus weeps over something that is gone, but needs to come back. And so here we see these words again. As he approaches Jerusalem, the city that is, in his own words before, your house is desolate, but it needs to be raised up. He wept. You can just feel the heart of Jesus approaching Jerusalem as a friend. I was going, oh my. And he says, this is to the city, he says, if you, even you. There's so much power in those words. If you, even you, had only known on this day what would bring you peace. And then he doesn't finish his sentence. I don't know, maybe he just couldn't because he was overcome with emotion. Or maybe, I don't know, maybe he just didn't want to say it. I, I, I don't know, but there's a lot of people who write about this, this particular verse because he doesn't finish what he's saying and he changes it but now now it is hidden from your eyes oh. there's something in this isn't this if you even you had only known on this day what would bring you peace because Jesus knows as I said earlier that we don't understand but Jesus does have a plan, and it's all in this verse. If you even knew what it's going to take. He's saying to Jerusalem, he's saying to us, if you knew what would take place, what I am about to do. Because Jesus knows, he's predicted it earlier. Jesus is about to step into the city. This is the last week of his earthly life. He's about to be humiliated. He's about to be tortured. And he's about to be killed by his very own creation. Hang on a cross and die. The price that had to be paid of our God hanging on a cross is so painful. But of course the good news is he did that for you. He did that for me. He did that for us. He did that so we could come back into relationship 
with him. A price had to be paid and Jesus, living a perfect life, is the only one that is able to pay it because no matter what the cost, here's the third thing that we need to know about Jesus. Jesus will bring us peace. He is the Prince of Peace. He has a plan for peace and he knows that we don't understand it. He's just asking us to trust him for it. Look, right now, it's a madness <laughs> outside. And people are losing loved ones. People are scared. I'm sure you and I, we're, we're scared for, for some people in our lives. Maybe it's ourselves. And I don't know, but I, I struggle to understand. I struggle to, to see God's plan in this. But I trust that he has one. I believe that he has one. And I know ultimately, because I believe in the word of God, because I believe in the promises of Jesus, because I believe he is who he said he is, that he will come and bring us peace. Because he has saved us. And it's not to, 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 to be lost to this coronavirus, because ultimately, the coronavirus is going to lose, just like the enemy loses. Because Jesus is the winner. Jesus is the king. So I just wonder right now, if you, if you are far from God, if you, if you didn't know this about Jesus, that he, that he can bring you peace, I wonder if, if everyone at home can just bow their heads and close their eyes. And right now I want to speak to a, a very particular group of people. If you don't know Jesus, if you haven't ever <laughs> prayed, or if you haven't ever hey, said, Jesus, I, I want to know more of you. Or say, hey, Jesus, I, I want to start following you. I wonder if you could just now find some words. And I'm going to pray a prayer. You can either follow what I say or you can say your own words. It's fine. There's nothing uh, particular about the words that I'm going to say. Um, but just, I want you to focus on this God, this God King, Jesus. Lord, I thank you. I thank you that you have a plan. A plan for us as a world, a plan for me as an individual. I thank you, Lord, that, that if I believe in who you are, if I believe that you are the God of gods, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, then I can put my trust in you. I know I can't understand you, but I know I can trust you. So Lord, I'm just asking that you bring me peace, that you bring this world peace. And Lord, I'd like to start following you. So Holy Spirit, I just invite you into my home right now. Fill this place and start speaking to me as I start speaking to you. In Jesus' name, everyone said, Amen, Amen. Hey, listen, if you prayed that prayer, that is... Uh, hands down the best decision you have ever made in your life and tell you what we, we we know that actually following Jesus isn't just a click and off we go it's actually a walk it's a marathon uh, it's a race that goes on for the rest of our lives uh, and it's it, it can be tough and it can be quite confusing so uh, what we've done in, in a simple way to help as, as our uh, as we're meeting online is we've created a Facebook group for our church um, if you go to our website, epchurchaog.com, you'll see on there, somewhere on the website, there's a button that said, I said yes. That's going to take you to our Facebook page, and uh, it's just a place that we can chat to you and, and guide you through the decision that you've just made. If you've got questions, if you want to talk about some things, some things don't make sense, that's fine. It's a safe space. It's a private group where you can just chat. Uh, to some of our team uh, and we can follow up with emails or, or phone calls with your permission of course. Hey guys, um, it's been so good to talk to you uh, today and just remember that Jesus is here. Jesus is still King. Jesus is still Lord and that is good news. Next week we're going to be celebrating Easter. We're going to be doing some uh, really fun things so make sure you're ready. Make sure you are in a spirit of of praise because hey this week let's just prep for Easter let's just remember what Jesus was going to do just then and what Jesus did do okay um, well stay blessed church it's been amazing to speak to you lots of love 
God bless. What an incredible word from Paul Serstad. I'm believing that word's going to encourage you and challenge you this week. Hey, listen, it's important at this time to stay connected, not just with church, but with each other. And a way that you can do that is through our Life Connect groups. Now, if you're not part of one, not a problem whatsoever. We can hook you up with one right now. All you have to do is email lifeconnect at epchurchaog.com and you'll be hooked up with one straight away. Listen, it's also important at this time to stay updated with everything that's going on in church. And how you can do that is through our website, and you can also do that on our social media platforms, which is Facebook, not Twitter, Instagram, and like I said before, our website. Now, just before I go, I'm going to end with a closing prayer. So please, once again, just bow your heads and close your eyes. Heavenly Father God, I thank you, Lord our God, that we get this time to literally just to dive into your presence together. Even though it may be online, you are still with us. Your spirit is still with us. We thank you, Lord, our God, because we've been able just to to carry out your word because, Lord, our God, the church isn't a building. It's faith and it's the people, Lord, our God, that make the church. And we thank you that we've been able to connect together through your spirit, Lord, our God, to hear from you and just to be in your presence. We don't take it for granted. Hey, God, we don't know everyone's situation, but we believe that, Lord, our God, that your hand is over it, Lord, our God, is over everyone and their families right now, God. We pray for our government, Lord, our God, that you'll be with them as they lead us in this time as well, God. Thank you for everything that you're doing. Lord, our God, we continue to trust by faith and not by fear. And we thank you, God. In your sweet, precious name, we pray. Lastly, just before I go, listen, stay blessed. Continue to just call people and check and see how people are doing. Um, and just be God's people and just shine God's light. So much love. See you next week for Easter Sunday. Ciao.